We are uh, at Stately Wook Manor. Uh, really glad to be here. This is our second attempt at an interview. Uh, some technical difficulties uh, got us messed up the first time, but happy that you guys were able to do it again. The first thing I want to say to you is, uh, and I don't know if you guys know this, but I think this is impressive about your band, but there is a mythology that is built up around you guys. There are stories about you that I don't know if they're true or not. And so I'm going to tell you what the story is. <laughs> That's a lot. You tell me if it's true or not, okay? And, it, and whether it's true or not doesn't matter. Like, just the fact that there are stories about you that may be true or may not, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. So the story that I heard before I, before I ever met you guys was that the first time you played on stage together as a performance, as a group, in front of people, you hadn't practiced together. True. Is that true? Fact. That is fact. Yes. yes. Okay, so how does that work? Is it just that you guys are such good musicians, or is it the nature of bluegrass that it's jazz-like and you kind of know where well, to let go? Me, let me say one thing straight. All of us had at least played with one of the other people in the group before Okay, that so there was a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon thing going yeah. on. Yeah. You could connect each other, yeah. but you never played together. Right, right. Whole. So how'd it go? It was fun. <laughs> well, one thing that makes those kind of things easier is when you pick the, the right guys, uh, that kind of stuff kind of falls in place a little easier. Like, I had grown up kind of being influenced by Jesse and Roddy, so like, when you get together to play music and you kind of study these you guys kind of know playing, stuff already. and uh, I had spent some time prior to that playing with Arthur, and Arthur and Galen went to high school together, so... Uh, what one didn't know, the other one would know, and we could kind of help each other out. You know, I could tell Roddy the changes to a song I knew Arthur was singing, and okay. vice versa. But and you're still together, so clearly it must have gone well enough that <laughs> nobody. Yeah, was we there. actually came. We decided to start a band in the parking lot after the gig. <laughs> we went out to our cars, and we were like, oh, "That was easy, and that was a lot of fun." So a lot of people watching this may think I've heard the name of the Wooks before, and probably because you guys just did the national anthem. <laughs> At a UK football game, right? Yeah. How, how did that happen? How was that? Maybe CJ's buddy in the athletic department, but also, I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. I, I had a contact okay. at UK, and I think I maybe uh, had exchanged some emails with them about some bluegrass music and how we could incorporate that in the UK sports, because we're huge UK fans. Yeah. Uh, we got scheduled to perform uh, an outdoor show at the tailgate lot for the UK game and when we became aware that it was going to be like 40 degrees and blowing and rain uh, they decided to cancel our gig and they said hey you want to do the national anthem and we said awesome yeah sure <laughs> <laughs> Watching you guys was that I don't I don't see how you could do what you guys do and not have a good time. Right. And, and the point I made was you guys covered Atlantic City by Bruce Springsteen. I guarantee he's never had fun performing that song. It's not a fun song in general, but you guys seem to have fun doing it. And so, <clears throat> does that go away ever? Do you like is is it ever a drudgery? I hope not. Sometimes I kick it and I get off a little slow and. <laughs> oh. Everybody gets mad at me. <laughs> you know, Jesse's played a long time, and Rod, you know, anytime you do something for a living, you know, it, it can be a job, but usually when you hit the stage and, and that, like, song kicks off, that's when the job kind of goes away for a while. It's yeah. just when you're, like, at the computer answering emails that the that's drudgery is yeah. occurring. In the 90s, when, when Napster was about, I found a file, and it, it, it purported to be from Fish, but you pointed out to me that it wasn't Fish, it was the Gourds, and they were doing Gin and Juice, a bluegrass version. And so the question then, the question now that I kind of asked was, they kind of treated it, or maybe I treated it, like a novelty. So, so what's better, for bluegrass to get wide exposure like that and be treated kind of like a novelty, or to just be received by the diehard fans who get 
the roots and get the importance and get the history of it. Which would you rather see? Well, there was a recently, what was it, Thunderstruck video came out. Some guys from overseas. It was like a viral, a viral video. video. And then there was also the, um, what were those kids' names? Sleepy Man. Sleepy Man Banjo Boys, I guess. Uh, you know. So those things are good because they, even if not everyone follows through, there are going to be a number of people that see that and it takes them to another level. They, they hit another button on their computer. So, so you'd, you'd rather see it? I'd rather, rather, yeah. Okay. yeah. I'd rather see anything and everything related to the music that we love break through. You know, if it's good, it's good. Like, even if it's a cover that might be a novelty, like, what it does, like, I, I, we talked about this last time, but a, a, a band that comes to my mind is, like, the Punch Brothers. They covered a song about the Cars, you know, and it was something that, Probably 99% of people, the first time I saw them do it was at Romp. There's probably 20,000 people uh, at that festival. And, you know, people that weren't bluegrass fans would have picked up on that song. But the biggest thing they pick up on is realizing that, wow, this isn't just, you know, what I thought it was. Well, I feel like I've gotten a lot of your all's time over the past few weeks, so thank you very much for this. No problem, man. Thanks, yeah, thanks. You guys do good stuff? Yeah.